What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my next gen career mode. This is episode number 60 and uh, we start today's episode by seeing that Herman uh, is grateful that we've now started to give him some more opportunities and that Serge Gnabry wants to play in the next game but neither of them did get to play in the next game. They were both either on the bench or in the reserves. Herman made the bench, Gnabry was in the reserves because uh, obviously they're not first team players. You know, you've got to expect that really but um, anyway we take on Augsburg, uh, Augsburg 1-2, I don't know how to pronounce it, for the first uh, game of of today's episode here at the Olympia Stadion. I did say, you know, at the start of the season, as you guys would have been seeing, this stadium had a little bit of a, a little bit of a curse on it. I couldn't seem to win at home in the league. I went what was it, like five, six games without a win. But uh, since then, we sort of sorted the problems out, really. As you can see, we are six points behind Borussia Dortmund, so closing the gap between uh, first place and uh, starting to starting to perform a little bit better at home as well. Of course, I always think that if you are going to win the league, you need some very good home form. You know, you need to get the supporters behind you and. Uh, we had, we had a diabolical start at home. We started to rectify that and started to play a little bit better. And as we do take on Augsburg here, uh, the first chance this game would actually fall directly from kickoff as uh, Lasoga ends up passing the ball to Kevin Volland. And uh, from that, we give it to Goretzka. Goretzka plays it out wide towards Marco Royce. Royce roulettes past one. And then body feints past another, keeps on going down the left-hand side. A wonderful show of pace by uh, by Royce ends up stopping the ball. Then a scoop turn, then a shot, but it's a really good save by the goalkeeper. So directly from kickoff, we almost made it one 0 but unfortunately, the goalkeeper made a really good save. And in the 14th minute, well, Moulders goes through one on one and scores. For the visitors, and I have literally no idea what happened to my defenders. None of them were in line, none of them were back on time, and suddenly Moulders was free one on one, and he scores to make it 1 0. I have no idea what happened there, and it is 1 0 to the away side. And in the 27 minute, we try to respond. Lasoga finds Volland, Volland finds Lasoga, Lasoga fake shots around his man and strikes it from range, but it's a really good save by Heats, I think it is in goal, and it is still 1 0. But from that corner, Royce crosses the ball in towards Ginter, our captain. And the header off the line hits the bar and is cleared away. So unfortunately, we couldn't level it there. Great piece of defending, and it is still one nil. In the 41st minute, Lasaga finds Volland. Volland finds William Carvalho. William Carvalho finds Lasaga, who strikes it. But again, it's another really good save by the goalkeeper, and it is still one nil to the visitors. And from the corner again, it's crossed in. This time towards Lasaga, it's cleared away only as far as Kevin Volland. Volland finds Sam, who strikes it. It takes a deflection and goes out for another corner. So the goalkeeper seems to dive through the net there. And from the corner. Royce crosses the ball in and uh, unfortunately it's well dealt with by the goalkeeper who's having a very good half and it's still 1-0. That was how the first half would finish with 1-0 down in the dressing room. We really did need to respond early on. And in the 48th minute, William Carvalho finds Sydney Sam. And Sam cuts in from the right, strikes it with his left, and finds the bottom corner. So we're back on level terms just a few minutes after the restart. Exactly what we wanted and exactly what we needed. And it is one apiece. And in the 51st minute here, Augsburg had a free kick. We got it away with Kevin Volland. Volland finds Lasoga. Lasoga plays a quick one to a Marco Royce. Brilliantly done. He's one on one with the goalkeeper. Am I going to finish? Well, you've got to bank on Lasoga to finish those one on ones, don't you? Accidentally stopped recording here as well for some reason, but uh, yeah, Lasaga scores the goal. I thought they'd include the replays as well because I forgot to show the celebration. Well, it's stupid, really. I, I went to type in a number so I knew when the goal was, and uh, I ended up pressing the stop record button. But anyway, Lasaga gets the goal, and uh, yeah, we're 2 1 in front. Very nice finish there. And in the 57th minute, you see uh, Augsburg get on the ball here down the right hand side. It's uh, Han who plays it forward towards G. G plays it back to Han inside towards the goal scorer for then Moulders, who takes the ball around William Carvalho or tries to. I gave it away with Schmelzer, and thankfully, for us as they ran clear one on one to Stegen was there to bail me out so still 2-1 but the visitors were playing very well in this game to be honest and from the corner it's crossed in and uh, the header is comfortably dealt with by Ter Stegen but uh, you certainly couldn't you know rule them out scoring an equaliser they were playing quite well and especially on attack they looked quite menacing but in the 81st minute William Carvalho releases Sydney Sam Sam takes it around his man with the Berber spin and then past the last defender here with the Ronaldo chop stops it then gets past his man again and strikes it but it's another a good save by the goalkeeper who despite conceding two goals was on course on man of the match and he probably would have got it as well the game did finish 2-1 so we do get a win and it was a lot more difficult than I expected as I just sneezed there off the air. Yeah, it was about more difficult than expected. Uh, but thankfully, two goals in four minutes between Sydney Salmon and Lasaga meant that we did come from behind to win it. It was a lot more difficult than I expected, yes, but it's just one of those things. This year at home, it's, you know, uh, fair enough, we have rectified it a little bit, but I still don't feel confident playing in front of our own fans this year. I'm not sure why. But anyway, uh, we won the game, and that was good. And the board also came to us and uh, said they acknowledged the positive changes and the dedication they've seen us bring to the club. And we know they've, uh, they know we had a lot of pressure and 
speculation, but they want us to stay as manager. They're happy with our performance. That's really, really good. Good vote of confidence there, and things are looking good for us. And uh, also, Herman wants a new contract, which isn't going to happen. And Greece came in for us afterwards and said, will you manage our nation? And I said, no. So uh, there you go. And uh, also, Langkamp has now said he wants to stay at the club. So Langkamp, who uh, threw a bit of a fit in the first few months, said he wanted to leave the club, and he wasn't happy here, and so on and so forth. And he wants to leave at the end of his contract, and yada, 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 yada. He now says he wants to stay, and I'm like, well, to be honest, you're on the transfer list anyway, so I don't really care. But fair enough, at least that means that he probably won't leave on a pre-contract in January. But we will offer him a contract anyway, because of course his contract is up at the end of the year, which means that um, even though he says he wants to stay, it does still mean that there is a chance he could leave for free, and I don't like to see that happen, because I'd at least like to get at least one million for him or something like that. But anyway, we take on Anderlecht for the second and final game of today's episode here in the Champions League at a snowy Olympia Stadion. And uh, to be honest, we are already through as group winners so long as you don't lose the game by eight goals or something stupid like that because uh, obviously United still have to play Marseille and apparently EA do have it it's not goal it's not head to head different it's not head to head it's goal difference that determines uh, who finishes above who which uh, of course it should be head to head but uh, apparently EA have it as goal difference but there you go um, but to be honest we were seemingly through anyway you know so long as we didn't have a meltdown and United didn't win by a few goals we would be going for as group winners so I did rest the entire side I still felt very confident and uh, in the first game, we had a really fast, encouraging start, and uh, we really did look to uh, try and score an early goal straight from kickoff. And um, well, to be honest, in this game, I wanted to do the exact same thing as we eventually kick off here. We played the ball out wide towards Serge Gnabry, who uh, gets past uh, Suarez here after playing a quick one-two with Danny Da Costa. Da Costa finds Gnabry. Gnabry waits for the run of our right back Da Costa, picks him out, and he scores and makes it one-nil. So directly from kickoff, we're one-nil up, and it's our right back who gets what I think is his first goal for the club the Costa gets it and you know when you're a, you know when you're a team like Anderlet when you're a big big team you've got to study your opponent's games on on the weekend you know if you're playing a midweek fixture you know the teams will usually study the game and watch the highlights or watch the full game even of uh, your opponents on the weekend and you know the Anderlet players clearly didn't bother with that because they would have seen in the first game we had a really fast start they didn't react to that and because of that we won nil up so won nil up early on and again we go through in the eighth minute here and uh, a really, really fast, encouraging start, but unfortunately, your shield shot was well saved by the goalkeeper, and it is still 1 0. But despite having a complete backup side, all the pressure was on Anderlet. We were playing so well, we were putting so much pressure on them. And as De Costa finds Gnabry, Gnabry finds, uh, I'm not sure who that was who took the shot, it might have been your shield, but his shot was well saved by the goalkeeper and put away, um, cleared away by the defence. And in the 45th minute here, you see Anderlet have a rare chance here. Suarez strikes it, but it's a good save by Zila, and we managed to get the ball away. So still 1 0, but but to be honest, that was the only chance Andalette had in the first half. And in the second half, we once again started brightly. Ostenali found Marion Saar. Saar found Ostenali here eventually with a tackle on the last defender. It comes to Gnabry. Gnabry finds Ostenali. Crosses the ball to the far post. Maya goes for there. It's cleared away. But they couldn't get the ball away under Letts. And as De Costa, the goal scorer, finds Omre Jean. Jean gets past his man. Rolls it through towards Werner who strikes it. But it's a really good stop by the goalkeeper. Sticks out a toe and uh, puts it behind for a corner. So still 1-0. And in the 81st minute here, you see Zila uh, kick the ball forward with the goal kick. It's cleared on towards Advijaj. Advijaj gets onto it, finds Timo Werner, Werner takes on his man down the left hand side here, it's a really good chance, he's got the pace to beat his man but I stopped the ball because I saw the advantage symbol in the top right, I wanted to have the free kick instead because I am quite dangerous from these types of free kicks, it is going to be my, uh, sorry, Werner who crosses the ball in, swings it into a dangerous area, Jonathan Tarr does score the goal but unfortunately it's ruled out for offside, so it's a good free kick, it's into a dangerous area, the goalkeeper can't get there, the defender's playing catch up but although Tarr scores the goal, it is ruled out for offside but it was still 1-0 and Anderlecht really didn't threaten. We could have made it 2-0 in the 89th minute here but uh, Werner ended up pulling up which is a real shame and hopefully that's not an injury but uh, even so it was an injury regardless uh, sorry hopefully it's not an injury for the long term but it was an injury for this game anyway but um, anyway we did win the game by a goal to nil so despite the fact we were already through as group winners you know it was still nice to win the final game what can I say a very very simple win the first goal uh, sorry the only goal coming in the first minute thanks to Danny DaCosta's early strike and yeah we are through as group winners you United end up drawing with Marseille, so regardless of what would have happened, we still would have gone through as group winners, and that's fantastic. We are through uh, to the knockout stages as group winners, and I'm very, very pleased with that, and I'll stop repeating myself now, but as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, because that's much appreciated, and it really does help my channel out, and I'll see you for the next episode of my next-gen career mode very soon. Ooh, £10 million. Lovely.